at our third antenatal session we everybody had just started you know everyone's starting to get to know each other we're all starting to feel comfortable um, I originally joined this group because I felt that you know none of my girlfriends are pregnant at the moment I'm gonna need a support group I felt that these women would be my support group um, to be honest with you there's probably one couple in there that my partner and I can envisage um, being friends with afterwards um, and they live locally to us um, I'm more concerned about her because <laughs> she lives out in the country and she's got no support around her um, but we can be supports for each other what I have found is on Facebook you've got your yummy mummies group hi ladies you've got um, the friendly mummies and I'm from Gisborne so I'm also involved with the um, yummy mummies from Gisborne because six weeks after baby's born I'm going to be spending all summer in Gisborne getting married so I want to be able to access a support group around that neighborhood um, I feel that online these women are so refreshing so honest um, any problem that you have you can basically go onto that group privately your partner won't know your family won't know your friends won't know and talk about anything and some of the funniest posts that I've seen come up on there like seriously I have a look through it once a day and I laugh out loud at the posts that are on those Facebook pages so thank you ladies for your support I've really enjoyed being part of it in our third antenatal class um, what we went over was actually men and depression and um, one of the dads was like oh whatever I sort of harden up and it was kind of like well no actually um, don't harden up we need to be aware that depression is quite a big thing in New Zealand there's also a thing we um, like you can become psychotic after you have the baby and this is where you hear about mums like murdering their children so you need to be aware that if you have any mental illness mental health illness bipolar depression anything like that before you get pregnant you need to let your medical doctor know that you plan on getting pregnant so that they can give you the correct medication for yourself and during the pregnancy so you can get pregnant if you have mental illness that has been medicated um, but you need to be really careful that when those hormones kick in after baby's born that you don't go into the baby blues department and the hormones don't come back up and you do something silly so please let your midwife know and your doctor know so that you can be medicated accurately so that you can have a fabulous and wonderful life with your baby so we as I mentioned we touched on men and depression um, we need to include our dads in what's happening it's not just mum breastfeeding feeding the baby and you two it's all three of you okay the sooner you include your dad and the father in on the caring of the baby the easier it's going to be on you um, men suffer from depression after the baby is born so you need to keep an eye on your partners they may not be angry or they may not be sad they may be depressed so you know just keep an eye out for that and make sure that you're looking after each other um, little things like coping with a crying baby you know, I'm just flicking through some of this stuff here guys because I don't want to miss anything out for you the other thing that was really important was um, breastfeeding there's a place called um, La Leech League and if you have any problems with your breastfeeding then the, these people will be able to help you so um, we did have some fabulous pictures floating around I will just find them for you um, here it is okay so what I learned about breastfeeding the baby doesn't just suck on the nipple the baby literally and you know as our breasts get bigger our nipple is including this area the baby actually latches on to the entire nipple so that all the muscles around the back here can start pumping the milk so if you are drying up 
and you're not producing milk, it's because you're not doing it properly, okay? What they say to do is that you have the baby at the same height as your nipple, so if it's nose to nipple, okay? And the baby, a bit like the skin to skin, and it start, skin to skin, it started crawling towards your nipple, you rub your nipple on the baby's nose. The baby will then stick its tongue out and start looking for the nipple. Then after that, it will open its mouth a little bit. We don't want a little bit. We want the baby's mouth wide open. Okay, so a little bit would be around there. Wide open. It needs to be wide, wide open. The more you rub it, <laughs> the more you rub your breast on your baby's nose and around the lips, the more the baby will open up its mouth, the tongue will drop to the bottom of the baby's mouth and it will literally suction on to your entire nipple, the whole thing, and take it all in. Behind there is the milk ducts and by baby sucking, it sends a message to your brain that we need to produce more milk. If baby isn't sucking on your breast properly, the message cannot be sent to your brain to create more milk, which stops the milk production, okay? Now, for me, okay, I'm doing recyclable nappies, you know, I'm not doing disposables. I know that there's a time and a place for them. However, this is about costs over a long period of time. Now, I said to my partner, how long are we breastfeeding for? He's like, oh, about six months. Some babies breastfeed for two years plus, okay? Up to six months, you can only give them breast milk. There are other babies I know that were breastfed up to 10 months. And then you can start giving them a bit of solids, but they are still wanting milk at that time. My mother said she breastfed my brother till he was three, but a lot of it was more of a comfort thing. Uh, milk formula is expensive okay so the longer you can produce milk and food for your baby the less cost you're going to have it's simple some women might not like it some women might like it if you are having problems breastfeeding you need to let your midwife know if you've separated from your midwife then Plunkett will be able to take care of you um, there's all sorts of information out there for women to be able to um, look after themselves and their babies and also you can store um, express breast milk so what it says here is that you can put it in the fridge so if you express the milk put it into a bottle it can stay out for 44 hours if you store it in the fridge it can stay in the fridge for 48 hours in the freezer box in a fridge two weeks okay and in a separate door fridge freezer three to six months and if you deep freeze it six to twelve months okay so there's really no excuses um, if you are going to be drinking alcohol you need to breastfeed your baby first and then you can have a drink if you have one drink you have to wait one to two hours before you can feed your baby. It's common sense. Your baby is going to get drunk, okay? It's not good for them. So I know a lot of mothers that have been breastfeeding for a long time and they just want to wean their children off. The other thing I found interesting, I'm hoping to have another child pretty much immediately after we have this baby. Um, and I said, oh, well, what am I going to do if I have two children and one's feeding and the other one's feeding? And... Um, my my um, antenatal tutor said well actually I had that happen to me the elder child weaned itself off the breast because it didn't like the taste of the breast milk go figure you know it probably has a bit of a different taste to it what I wanted to show you guys was this parent port now parent port is a place where if because of a family crisis illness stress or tiredness for free you can get someone to come in and help you with the childcare while you rest, 
light housework, laundry, basic meal preparation, and transport for medical appointments. Um, you can ring them on 486 Use these government, um, oh, actually this isn't a government facility, it is a charity, but they, you know, they do like it if you could give a donation. So, you know, but if you don't have the money, that's okay as well. Just ring them and ask them to give you some um, support. And um, there was also, they gave us practical baby care, some tips. What I liked, uh, nappy care, bathing, you know, essentials for a newborn and basic clothing you will need six to eight one onesie crotch fastening with sleeves six to eight all-in-one crotch fastening without sleeves obviously summer winter six to eight singlets seven pairs of socks two bonnets or hats six t-shirts six sweatshirts or woolen jumpers six flannelette squares or bunny rugs six bibs seven pajamas and nighties and two dozen cloth nappies um, pins liners over naps and a nappy bucket so i found that really interesting um, don't go overboard mums uh, your children zero to three months they need to be wrapped up basically i'm gonna do the onesies i get tired of seeing little baby socks on the ground all the time i'm gonna sew the socks onto um their pants um my child is going to be born in summertime and i said to my mama oh, baby won't need too many clothes he'll be out sunbathing at the beach she's like are you crazy you know and i'm like well i just you know typical little maori kid running around new with gum boots on that's what i thought um but i have gone and brought a whole heap of nappies um i'm going to test them out first and i'll i'll see you i'll show you guys what they're like but don't go overboard um go to secondhand shops um and get the clothing there the majority of the clothing is in really good nick because the children have been wrapped up and have bibs over them um a lot of mums throw out their clothes because they just never had time to wear them also a lot of um you know pumpkin patch tnt um kids cotton on they have lots of sales i went into the mall today and um uh, TNT I think it was they were selling pants for like a dollar dollar ninety nine so don't go out spending loads of money on baby clothes simply because they're gonna grow out of them hopefully you're gonna have more kids so you can utilize them but I wouldn't go buying designer labels babies don't know babies don't care so that is our antenatal classes to date and I think I'm going to get Daryl to have a chat to you guys also in another video about how he's finding the antenatal classes so that, you know, you can show your men and say, see, see, this is what Daryl says. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. If there's anything else that you want to know about before we go to antenatal class, let me know. All right then, ka kite anō.